The first shot here, I wanted to really go in medias res. You know, we are in her house and she's talking to us and we just walk in with her. When I filmed this first shot, for some reason I had on my mind documentary films from the 1960s. I thought, you know, of a team walking in there with a 16 millimeter film camera, you know, and her talking to the team. <laughs> you know, in my mind it was grainy 16 millimeter film, but this is obviously not grainy film. But that was the aesthetic on my mind. And the beginning of the film I wanted to make visually, you know, quite diverse. We have her sitting at the piano, then she's sitting outside, and then we see her sitting in her chair listening to a recording from one of her concerts. So I really wanted to, let's say, grip viewers with the opening and show diverse settings. My name is Alexander Tuschinski, I'm the film's director, and in this audio commentary I want to tell you a little bit about the backgrounds of this film, why I you know, designed it the way it is, why I filmed it the way I did, and how it came about. All these shots you've seen so far are from the first day of filming, which was in mid-2018, and except for one shot, this is something very interesting. We see her sitting here listening to the recording of the concert, but the close-up of her, this one, I filmed almost a year later, because on that day the lighting was not so per perfect and for some reason the close-up of her face that I shot that day, I, it didn't turn out as good as it could be, so I thought let's do it again when the film was almost completed. And that's really the magic of editing, I find, that you can just combine two shots that are filmed so long apart and it looks like one. You know, a year later I just we put on the concert again, she listened to it and I filmed her close up again. And the lighting was better that time. The first day of filming was in mid-2018 and it was very, very spontaneous. I first met Gerda Hermann in May of 2008 when I was a pupil at Dillmann Gymnasium in Stuttgart. A music piece I had written was performed that day and it was, <laughs> I remember it was a rondo for violin, viola, flute and accordion. Me playing the accordion and she sat in the audience and approached me afterwards. I was 19 years old then. And so we got in contact, but I'll continue in a second. Here we have the book title song. And that song was one of the last additions to the film. When the film was almost done, one evening I just listened again to the first, uh, to her most recent concert. She had given me a CD of it and I had listened to it in the past. And suddenly I noticed this song, which for some reason had slipped my attention before. And actually at that point in the film we just had an overview of the books and she mentions the books and then we cut to this. And suddenly I had the idea, let's put the book title song there. And I made notes that evening, you know, in the stereo recording, where are the singers coming from? From the left, from the right, from the middle, and depending of the position, I planned where the books should be positioned. Then I called Gerda Hermann the next morning and I just visited her in the afternoon with the camera and we filmed the books. She had prepared them in the right order and we just did it. And I think this spontaneous approach to filming really summarizes the way this film was made. By the way, I love these shots of the photo album. You know, I decided to show most of the pictures in that context. Some of them we put on a tabletop, but I loved them in the album actually, because I wanted to give this film a feeling that we are visiting her. And this brings me actually to why I had the idea to do this film in the first place. So Gerda Hermann and I knew each other since May of 2008, and a song I wrote plus a poem were published in one of the anthologies that she co-publishes with the Förderkreis Kreatives Schreiben und Musik e.V. And, and then 
Over the years, our contact became less because I was very busy doing some things and so on. And then in 2018, she approached me again after my film Timeless uh, screened in Stuttgart and a newspaper wrote about it. She read about it and she just approached me and congratulated me on it. So in early 2018, I visited her at home again after quite a few years and we talked about all kinds of topics. And I just thought, it's so remarkable. She has all these pictures, all these stories, all her songs. It needs to be all, you know, it needs to be put into a movie so that other people can have this experience of visiting her. By the way, this shot, I really was impressed, you know, when I saw her fingers moving like that while she spoke. So I filmed the close up there as well. And the beginning of the film, these parts where she's talking about her childhood and what it was like under the Nazis and all the World War II stories that are actually, you know, very sad stories. For a while, until almost the last cut, there was no music for these scenes. And then I noticed that basically we have a 10 minute segment that doesn't even have any music in it and doesn't address music. So one of the last days of producing these films, I visited her and we just looked for instrumental pieces that could go you know, in mood to these scenes here. Anyway, so in early 2018, I had the idea to do the film and she was interested. And yeah, so I visited her one day with a camera and that's basically the entire crew of this film. It's just me with a camera and a microphone. It's a very, very small production. I visited her with a camera and I filmed a lot of footage, interviews. I filmed two songs, the feminist Moritat from the opening and Tante Adai, and we filmed her listening to the Panther. And I remember that day, I felt there's so much to film here. I need to do it quickly. I need to film as much as possible. And we actually got quite a lot of things done. From that first day of filming in mid-2018, it took me a while to actually get to edit the footage. Because there was so much going on here and this was, you know, a small passion project I did. And then in early 2019, I... I had some time and I assembled that footage into a 17-minute work print. I sent it to her and she really liked it. And then I thought, let's expand upon that. It's a good basis, but it needs more, you know, more material to be more interesting. The first day of filming included mostly handheld footage and very little, you know, in terms of context. We had a few photos, but on that day she mostly told me of several things. I interviewed her about things, I asked her questions. So the first step in 2019, when I actually set out to finish that film, was to film more material, you know pictures or things that illustrate certain things. On the first day of filming, we had actually filmed, for example, her father's diary, but we hadn't filmed the song that she had written from the text in her father's diary. So in 2019, I decided let's, you know, film the song so I could intercut the song with the text in the diary. And something that fascinates me very, very much is we see these old letters, you know, these artifacts, these artifacts from the 1940, this artifact here from 1943, and she actually vividly remembers writing it. It's really one of the reasons that I thought it's really important to preserve it on film is how vivid her memory is when she speaks of all these things that for most viewers are history that's long ago. She speaks of it as a memory that's just very, you know, fresh in her mind. And I love these faces that are drawn on the letter. It's kind of like a predecessor to smiley faces. And I thought it's pretty impressive, you know, that it's all there and how she presents this. And basically, this letter, for example, if I recall correctly, on the first day we just filmed the close-up of the title page and then the continuation of the letter was another day. 
And these shots here with the instrumental pieces, these more, you know, sad instrumental pieces to her, very sad and dark memories of events in the war, hear about her father's death, death. These pieces we filmed in one of the last sittings, basically in 2019. It turned out like this. I had the 17-minute work print. Then I called her and we talked about several things and she had ideas and told me what kind of documents she has. I asked her, do you have a photo of this or that? And then I visited her at home and I just filmed some more segments. Then I went back home, edited it that evening and the next morning already sent her the new work print that was longer and more expanded. And that's how the film grew. And, you know, then she contacted me saying, oh, I have some more documents here, or I have another thing here. I found this. Could this be of interest? And I saw it as a challenge to include as many details as possible without making the narrative, you know, seem disjointed or overlong. My idea was that this film should feel like a spontaneous conversation, that like a real conversation, like a natural conversation, can develop from point A to point B with some detour in between, while still feeling coherent. And we filmed it in lots of little segments. I asked her about something, then we filmed something else in a different position. So the whole structure of this came entirely in the editing. And this is one of the moments See where I filmed the piano and her playing the song and then reading the poem. A lot of ideas to me come during the editing. You know, when I do the filming, I already think how can it be assembled and so on. But the editing is really a phase that I love where a lot of the creative ideas, you know, just develop from the footage I filmed. And I already had the idea that we have the song playing in the background while she reads the poem from the diary. Actually, a shot of the diary is May 2018, I believe. It was May, mid-2018. And then the shot of the piano was in 2019. And then I had the idea, one of the days she in 2019, she had shown me this typewritten text about her father's death. And then I had the idea to put that you know, as a contrast, we have this handwritten emotional diary, and then we have this typewritten text. And when I first assembled this and then watched the scene, even though I knew all of this beforehand, it really hit me quite, quite hard emotionally, this moment where we have his love poem, and I decided to conclude it with the shot of her parents in happy times, which is very moving, knowing how her father died and at the same time I thought it's a little bit of a touch of you know the two of her pair two of them happy you know after this very sad and emotional moment this scene here where she talks about her experiences during the air raids I kept very close to her face because I wanted us to you know be there with her without much distraction and we can see it's very emotional, these memories. And the one shot that just that we just saw of the camera, you know, panning from her hand to her face and back, it looks very rehearsed, but it's not. Because I didn't want to, you know, do this scene multiple times, you know. It's an emotional thing, it's an emotional story. Basically, this was me with one camera filming her and then while she was telling the story at one point I moved to her hand and then pulled up to her face and pulled down, you know, the camera, I panned to her face and down and it turned out very appropriate to what she says and, you know, in between I shortened a few things. That's something I find it a big challenge and also a challenge I very much like. When you do interviews, most of the time you have to shorten several things, obviously. When you interview, you want as many details as possible because in the final film, there could also always be a spot where you can need some information, but in general, it needs to be shortened in any documentary film. And here also, there is some shortening going on, but you can see the way she talks. It's very interesting. A lot of details I kept in. Some of them I removed for the overall flow. 
Well, something I really, really liked is how natural she is with the camera, Gerda Hermann. You know, this is the very first film that was done about her. And I found she's absolutely the same if the camera is running or not. We see these moments when she's talking about the war. It's very emotional and I decided to just stay on her face, basically. Not put her in bigger surroundings and so on, just show it close up. Because I felt that's most appropriate. But yeah, when the camera is running, it just seems like <laughs> there's no camera there. It's absolutely natural, just the way she talks when her and I talk. This doll was a spontaneous idea. One of the days we were filming, I noticed the doll and I asked her about it and she told me and I, while she was telling me, I said, okay, let's just do this on camera. Please tell me on camera about the doll. And so, yeah, she explained. And again, I shortened it a little bit. She provided more context, but it was, you know, it's very nice. And I find it so interesting when you have these artifacts from the past that are in the present and she remembers getting this doll. This song here, this tango, this is again a spontaneous idea during editing. We filmed her listening to the tango because we like the song and it looks very nice with the three singers. And then separately we filmed these shots of her and her sister, you know, taking dancing lessons. And then during editing I noticed, you know, the tango and the dancing lessons go together and I actually wanted, you know, after the war scenes and the memories of the 30s and so end, I wanted to, let's say, start the post-war period with, you know, an upbeat song to kind of, you know, show this post-war phase, even though, you know, the first years post-war were difficult years, still the ending of World War II and so on. And then I thought I'll put the tango there. Then I noticed we have the story of her taking dancing lessons in the years after the war. And I thought this is a beautiful way to intercut it. And I always wanted to give the film a very free-flowing feeling, very spontaneous feeling. There were no rehearsals. Basically, you know, I, I would just, we would talk about several things she could say and so on. And then I let the camera run. And very few times we did multiple takes. I mean, sometimes we, I mean, sometimes you did multiple takes for technical reasons. You know, maybe I'm filming her and there's some noise outside. Outside suddenly that's distracting. Then I would say, okay, please start over. But generally speaking, this is just her telling her stories, and it was very important for me to give this film this kind of free-flowing feeling because it's so beautiful for me to visit her you know when i visit her she prepares cake we talk about things you know and then i'm very interested also in her memories what she did and so on and i'm very interested in her arts and then she plays new songs she has written and i find this very nice the moments with her husband um when we have these very old photos and then we have these pretty recent photos and when they are seen next to each other this was a motif i really really liked and i remember also in the first edit of the film in the 17 minute version after the first you know when we first did some filming in 2018 on one day she mentioned her husband she talked about him but i really didn't have a picture so i asked her do you have a nice picture or two and then she showed me quite a lot of pictures and I loved you know the picture that's just upcoming this combination <laughs> not this one although it's also nice you see how they're putting the books there but when we compare the old picture to the newer picture with so many years in between that's something I found you know very moving and touching and this shot you can see the zoom in you know I like using the zoom lens you know, in my feature films, it's very often noted that the way I zoom and edit reminds quite a lot of people of 1960s films. And I would say there's certainly an influence because I like many films from the 60s. And in the 1960s, for example, the zoom lens was very often used. So I think that's really um, an element to my style. But in this film, I really wanted to make the style, so to say, secondary to the actual story or to what's presented. 
Because in my feature films, sometimes the style, the visual style and the story are equal, of equal importance. Basically, sometimes the significat and the significant, I don't know if that's the English correct words, are of equal importance. Some scenes are ju just made so the style gets noticed and that's something I like. In this film, I really wanted to make the style interesting, to make the film visually interesting, which I saw as a challenge because we have not many locations. So I wanted to make it interesting with this location and the documents and all that, but really hold the style you know, back the style supports the subject matter of the documentary, but the style doesn't get overwhelmingly in the foreground. To me, it's always, you know, depending on the film, you make stylistic choices and decisions. And you can see this half of the film when she starts talking about, you know, her life, you know, post-war, and then when she starts talking about her first compositions, suddenly the music gets much more in the foreground. We actually see the score, how it's written, and this handheld camera style, this was from the first day of filming, when I didn't have a tripod with me. The first day was really more an exploration with a handheld camera, and we did quite a lot. And I liked how you see how it goes from first sketch to the final piece. And on the first day of filming, she mentioned writing her first piece in 1984, and then it continued. And then in 2019, I had the idea, let's film the first musical piece, actually, and show it entirely. And you see, I don't work with storyboards most of the time. Sometimes I storyboard more complex scenes, but this scene also was very spontaneously done. I love editing music and sound, you know, to make to put music into images. If you know my other films, you certainly know that. But I really never had filmed a piano in any significant way. In my first bigger feature film, Menschenliebe, there is a scene where Constantine is sitting at the piano and you see some shots of the hammers and some, you know, playing with the polished mirrors, mirror-like surfaces, but really not much. So I saw this as a challenge to film each song in a kind of different way and to make it visually interesting. And, you know, I filmed with one camera, so she played this song, for example, multiple times. And I was a bit, you know, concerned when I was filming, I thought, and editing. Will we notice that it's multiple takes, you know, or how does this work? But I was delighted to find that she plays so precise, I could in theory, just use the audio from one take and the picture from another, and they wouldn't be out of sync because she keeps the same speed and intonation. And I worked with a lot of, let's say, short-term memory here. I memorized, you know, this part of the song, I already filmed the hands close up, so in the next take, I'll film the hammers of the piano. <laughs> I love when she says it's called elegie. She's actually speaking to me and not to the camera. You can see she's slightly looking above the camera, which is something I love about her, you know. She's just, you know, so... She radiates a kindness and a sweetness, and she doesn't change because there's a camera there. And, you know, in that moment, she just told me, you know, behind the camera, it's called elegie, and it just looks so pleasant and so nice. Yeah. But, you know, recording the songs, I like camera moves, and it's, it was just my approach. I, the first take, I remember, I did it from the side, and I remembered, okay, here I did a close-up of this, and then I, you know, that's why I need to do the next camera angle, a close-up of her hands on the keys, but only for these moments, and then the other moments like this. This was one of these spontaneous moments. I loved this angle, looking through the doorway, and then I decided to zoom in, because I just like zooms, and a lot of the camera moves are actually very intuitive in all of my films. It's a lot of intuition of the moment. I like to, you know, do it that way. And this is one of the last scenes we filmed. I remember her calling me, telling me of her ancestor who went to the United States. And, you know, in each of these parts, I obviously have to shorten a bit 
But when we have these written documents, when you have these newspaper excerpts and so on, I really like to show them and pan across them. So in theory, if someone wants to know more, they could just pause and read them, you know, read them all the way through. And you see, this is a style I really like with these zooms and that cuts to a static close up. Editing when was such a pleasure. You know, I edited every day after filming. In the evening I edited and the next morning a new rough cut was finished. Which means that the final film was actually finished very quickly after we did uh, the last day of filming. Oh, this picture, by the way, I find it so impressive. We see this old picture and that's Gerda Hermann there as a child. This picture which must be from 1932 or so. She was born in 1931. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive, I find, when you have this old picture and she's actually there and to talk about it. And with a lot of pictures, you see, I liked to put them in context, so to say. We see the photo album, we see the picture in a frame. I really, I did it with very few pictures that I just show the picture by itself, you know, because I like all of this being like a casual conversation we have. And by the way, to make it look like a casual conversation, like a casual visit, she had to wear the same outfit for every day of filming. When we filmed the first day in 2018, it was just the outfit she happened to wear that day, so we just filmed like that. And when we did more days of filming in 2019, each day she had to wear the same outfit again, so we don't have... Not say not to say continuity errors, because it wouldn't be an error, it would just be a different day or so as a documentary, but so it would still appear like it's the same day. In some shots she has a jacket on top of this outfit, in some shots she's just like this, but yeah, that's something that was important. These shots again and this song were all filmed on the first day of filming in 2018, and you can see the handheld camera. Tanderadai, I think that song, I don't know why we picked it. I think, if I recall correctly, she showed me several songs she had written and I was really interested. How would she, you know, how would Tanderadai sound, which is a very old German poem, a medieval German poem. And these shots of the flowers and all that, that was very spontaneously filmed. I was walking with her outside and... I just like to film aesthetic shots, so to say. And that's what I did, and I thought maybe they can be useful. This one, this is the letter, her father's last letter to her, and the part in the middle that's highlighted, heads up, that is my credo, so to say, as a rough translation. And I really wanted to stress it visually here. Yeah, but in general, I had the idea to make it visually interesting, even though we have more or less the same location. We have some outside scenes. So she, says, she sits in different positions. This, by the way, from the very first day of filming. The initial interview on the first day of filming was quite long. I talked to her about many topics. And then I assembled the 17-minute work print, and then we could talk, you know, much more aimed at certain topics that I wanted more detail or so. And you see angles like this, where she's standing at the piano. We just experimented with different positions for talking about different things to make this whole film visually more diverse, so to say. Yeah, but... After the f last day of filming, it was very, very a quick process, a very quick process to finish the film, actually. Basically, edit, I think I finished the editing after the last day of filming, which was in spring of 2019. And then I did the audio mix and so on, which took a little bit, but not too long. Did some color correction and all, all the required post-production things. And then the film had its premiere on June 29, 2019, one day before Gerda Hermann's 88th birthday. By the way, this book with the picture of Fritz Klump, I thought it was such a beautiful picture and I liked the book. So I got in touch with the authors. Gerda Hermann showed me the book and I got in touch with the authors and they were very pleased that I could put the book in the film, which I'm very grateful for. 
and yeah, it had its world premiere one day before Gerda Hermann's 88th birthday, and it was such a pleasant event. I really liked it. Basically, on that day, a lot of her friends came, and her family, and a lot of my friends and family. It was just beautiful. It was, and a lot of people actually who were just curious about it. It was in Delphi Theater in Stuttgart, and yeah, <laughs> people were really pleased with the film, which made me very happy. This song, this humorous song, I really like the singer's performance. You know, how he is stressing the words and yeah, it adds a lot to the humor. It was also some, something we filmed a little bit after the initial filming, sometimes in spring 2019, because we talked about Fritz Klump and then she showed me his humorous poems and the songs and I really liked them. and. Yeah, so we edited it. This shot I really like very much. I think I was in the other room uh, doing something with the camera and I think um, adjusting it or so and she was in that room and she talked to me and I looked over and I thought this angle of her sitting there in the midst of all this, that's just beautiful. And this is one of the few shots we did multiple takes of, you know where she would, the first take was this whole setting far away, like the opening of this zoom, just static. Then she said the same thing in a close up. And then I said, oh no, let's do a zoom. So she said the same thing three times. And this song here, the snowman, that was such a spontaneous idea. You know, doing that song, basically I started packing in my camera and all that. And we talked about what's new, what kind of new songs she created. And she just presented to me the snowman. And I thought, no, no, stop, stop. We have to get the camera out again and, you know, film this because it's so nice. And this is basically how the film got created. A lot was so spontaneous. And you see here, I tried, again, it's filmed in a different way than Elegie, for example, because I wanted to make it visually uh, diverse the way the songs are filmed. See, I like her hands on the keys and I also like the hammers of the piano. And, you know, it's not much planning. It's, let's say it's an instinct. It's very instinctual when I do filming or when I do camera angles. Just, I have very quickly, I very quickly have ideas and then I just put them in the picture and she played the song two times, three times. And, you know, I have filmed this, I filmed that, and often I already know the way I intercut it. So the footage you might have pans and zooms in it that look weird because I already know that that moment I would actually cut to a different angle and I readjust the camera to make it look like more angles. So it's all you know, a very pleasant process. And in general, I got to say, doing this film was just a pleasure and a very, very nice project. You know, I got to hang out with her, which is very nice. And I hang out with her generally. I, do, I just I visit her and we talk about things. And we got to talk about so many things. And I got to be creative here and more people get to see her. For example, this shot here of the books in the drawer, that was also a late addition one of the last days of filming because she talks about the books and I thought let's just show them and basically the earlier work prints already have a lot of detail in them but then they get visually more interesting until I felt the film is done overall it were not that many visits but there were a few Basically, we had this initial visit in mid-2018 for a few hours where I filmed quite a lot of handheld footage to assemble a 17-minute work print, which I assembled when I had more time in early 2019. And then when I showed Gerda Hermann that work print, all was very quick. Basically, we worked quite concentrated in March and April to do more days of filming and editing. And the film was basically ready by, I think it was by May of that year, by May 2019. And then we screened it in June. And this invitation with the poem is also, you know, it's very interesting when you think about how it was done. She showed me all kinds of material 
and I filmed her, you know, reading this because I liked the poem. And then in editing, I had the idea where to place it. When she presented this, it was mostly asking her, oh, what did you do here? And she had ideas, oh, look, this is my invitation to the concert in 1994. And while editing, I figured this is a strong ending to the film. And you see this verse here, this verse where she's, where, where it talks about outlawing war, Echten. I don't know if that actually the translation would be outlaw, but it gets the meaning across. Basically, it means to, you know, make war something that's not socially acceptable. I think that's how it's uh, how a proper translation would be. And this poem I thought was very strong, and I filmed it, and I filmed that verse and close up. And then I decided, let's make this the ending. And this little quote here, I thought that's just yeah, a beautiful conclusion to the movie. And that was the conclusion already in the 2018 slash early 2019 version, which has a 17 minute work print. And I remember when we had the premiere happening, people applauded when it says Musik Gerda Hermann, Music Gerda Hermann, which was very, very nice. It was just a very pleasant event. Well, this is now the closing credits, so the audio commentary is also coming to a conclusion. I'm very glad that you are interested in the film and that you listen to this audio commentary. This was a very pleasant project and I'm very glad that, you know, People now get to experience Gerda Hermann, her story, her art. And I'm very glad that you are interested and listen to the commentary.